Hello everyone, we are here in the spotlight with the ac American actor Hubert Point de Jour. Welcome here at Budapest FM. Thank you so much, appreciate it man. How are you doing? How, how was your day? Good, good. I'm doing um, very good. Um, a little bit tired. <laughs> I think before, before we started today I was talking a little bit about some of the training I'm doing for the, the project that I'm filming out here. So um, I did have some uh, training, combat training this mm -hmm. morning and I ran over here but I made it <laughs> and I'm, I'm good to go. You made it safe? I made it safe. Nobody approached me. I didn't have to use what I, my training at all. <laughs> anybody. So it's good. It's good. Um, since when are you training? Um, since I got here in October. And you're shooting Continental right now? The Continental, yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's going to be on the Stars Network mm -hmm. and um, it, it will come out in the, probably 2023 but uh, um, that's the project, and it's a uh, it's a prequel to the the John Wick movies. Oh, okay. And did you like the John Wick movie? I did. I did. Um, I didn't watch them until I was offered this this role. Mm -hmm. So I had been hearing about the movies, and I had a lot of friends who were telling me about it, and they said you got to watch these movies, you know. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get around to it. And then uh, when I had an opportunity, uh, yeah, to um, to maybe be involved in this project. I said, all right, I got to watch them. And there's three of them. And I was just blown away, mm -hmm. blown away. So then it made me extra excited to, to be involved in this project. And when you watch a movie, do you watch it as an actor? You try to sneak peek or you trying to take away some, some notes of other actors? Or you just watch it and you just enjoy yourself? Um, um, that's a good question. I mean, I think I always have that part of my brain that is watching as an actor, you know, um, but sometimes uh, certain films or a, a play or something surprise me and then uh, I'm not thinking about it. I just get taken away in the story. Um, but there's always something I'm, I can learn when I'm watching certain actors, even if I'm watching something and after a while that the acting is so good, I'm like, man, this is, wait, what are they doing? How are they doing this? You know, so uh, I think I, it's kind of both. Mm -hmm. So it depends basically on the movie and on your mood, though, right? Uh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it depends also. Yeah. And how, how, how did acting come to you? Because um, we'd be talking beyond that, and you said that you've been singing as well. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. I used to sing um, when I was a kid in church. Uh, I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn, um, in Catholic church. My, my parents used to put me in the, in the choir, and then I used to sing, and do solos and uh my my dad used to uh insist that I do solos in uh, the choir even if there was no solo he said you have to ask for a solo <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what are you talking about um so I did I, you know I, I sang in choirs for a while and then in high school in the 10th grade I did a musical um Oliver and then I kind of had some of the acting in in that show and I realized oh I, I really like the acting so I auditioned for a performing arts high school in Long Island. Um, that was a half day program. So first, uh, the first part of the day, I did my regular high school, mm -hmm. my math and science, you know, core classes. And then the second part of the day, I did my musical theater training that was dance, acting and singing. And so I did that program for two years and then um, continued to study in college, went to NYU. And then, uh, but during NYU, I, I realized I was um, liking the acting much more than the singing. So I focused, I did one year of Shakespeare and Shakespearean training, uh, classical um, theater training. And I really liked that. So when I graduated, I said, I'm just going to focus on the acting. Mm -hmm. And which one do you prefer? Because you have several movies coming out, a series. Yeah. Do you prefer theater or Movies, which one do you like better? Well, right now I'm really liking movies and TV. That's, that's, uh, that's my focus. But my, my background is mostly in theater because um, after I graduated um, college, I traveled around the U.S. and did plays. Um, I even went to Africa and did a, did a play in Zimbabwe. And I did many, many plays, all different styles of um, plays. But... Uh, um, yeah, uh, maybe about three, four years ago, I, uh, my focus shifted and I, I needed a, a new challenge. I needed a um, different kind of project. So um, I uh, 
I decided to focus on the um, on camera. So that's that's my focus. But I will go back to theater. You know, <laughs> the thing is, you don't have to choose. That's the thing. I yes. can do both. So so um, I'm always going to do both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you said in Zimbabwe. Have you ever have you been to other parts of Af- Africa as well? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I, I wish. I know your family's from Nigeria. Yes. yes. So uh, uh, I would love to go to Ni- Nigeria. So. Um, no, for right now it's just Zimbabwe I've been to. Oh yeah, um, and any other country that you visited and you really fell in love with it? Um, you know, I'm I'm. There's a lot of places I have to go. You know, I haven't been to that many um, places, honestly. Um, I do like Canada. I think is there I think Canada, Canada. <laughs> is, is there one country that you really want to go? Which one is the first that you want to go? For? Um. Well, I would I would say Haiti probably because you know this is where my parents are from and mm-hmm. I have never been, so I feel like I I have to say that and I I do mean that um, I would like to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and since you're here in Hungary for the past over six months now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you like it here? I really like it, man. Really like it. Even though there's so much I haven't seen, you know, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. when I. When I was uh, hanging out with uh, with you guys last week, you guys were like, "You haven't been here. You haven't been here." You know, uh, so there's so much I have to see in um, in Hungary and, and Budapest. But uh, uh, but I really like it. I like the city. I'm very um, I like urban environments and environments where there's lots of people. That's that's where I tend to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So so the uh, the Pest side is is feels very natural to me and. Um, I really like it, but I have to explore the the Buddha side. Yes, some more. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and the countryside as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and um, you mentioned that um, between us, you mentioned that you have a wife. I do. Um, yeah. Since when are you married? Uh, Twenty twenty. Twenty June. All right. Yeah. Um, is she is she's going to come and visit you, or has she visited you already? Well, she's visited three times. Three times already. Um, she was just here, and um, she just left. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, she she came a few times. She loves it also. Um, I did a lot more exploring when she was here because she's she's uh, more outgoing. She's mm-hmm. a better planner than <laughs> than me. Um, so we do. So we we did a lot of fun things when when she was here. But uh, yeah, I've been married. Uh, about two years now yeah. um but obviously you, you travel and walk around in the city in, in in groups it's easier because alone it's it's not that fun yeah it's not as yeah. fun and how are the other actors do you hang out together oh yeah yeah they're great we were um like i said my wife left on monday and uh sunday for the easter holiday a bunch of the actors hung out and uh, one of them is an amazing cook uh, michelle prada is her name and uh, she cooked for us and we just uh, we had a great time, so we we often hang out. And do you make friends when, while you're on set? Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, often you do. I mean, it's it's one of those things. Uh, it can just happen naturally. Um, I, I don't try, you know, mm-hmm. to, but things just happen naturally. And then after a project, I'll notice I'm keeping in touch with some people more than others, and that's kind of the way mm-hmm. the way it goes. But I'm. I'm cool with everybody <laughs> on on set. Yeah, and there's yeah. one thing that I want to ask of every actor I meet: that can you cry on purpose? On purpose? I mean, <laughs> uh, yes, I can. I know it's it's such a funny question because uh, I think um, there's sort of a fascination with this type of emotional uh, show of feelings, mm-hmm. I guess, right? From non actors, yeah, and even actors um, when you're when you're learning how to act, that's really a big thing in your mind. You're like, can I cry? How am I going to do this? So, um, but once you get to a certain point, um, I don't, I don't want to say it's easy, but I think uh, for me, it's not something that um, I focus on really, just, just happens. It just happens. You know? So it's, it's very rare that there's a script that says, you have to cry here at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the time, it's not like that, and it just happens and that's my favorite way when there, mm-hmm. when it says you have to cry i'm like all right, all right. <laughs> okay. so 
I have to squeeze it out. I'm, squeeze- <laughs> <laughs> I'm pinching myself. I'm like, <laughs> but no, to, the simple way to answer your question is I, I can. I mm-hmm. can. Yeah. Um, and what do you think is the most difficult part of being an actor? Um, that is a very good question. I think uh, the most difficult part... Is it, um, is it, is it, can, can it be just, I don't know, learning the script or um, handling other actors' attitudes, I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, <laughs> I mean, you know, there are some characters that you <laughs> have to work with sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, uh, um, I, have, I have my way of uh, dealing with, with certain things. And I, I'm usually so focused, so... Uh, Um, learning the lines is the easiest part, really. It's a very technical part of it. So, um, I mean, I think I think it's tricky when you're starting to act for a lot of actors, not every actor, to to make the living, uh, make a living out of it. Finding out, finding that balance, mm-hmm. you know. And it depends what what you're what you're doing, you know. Um, since I started doing theater, at first, um, it, it was a little bit tricky because in, in the states it's the income is not that much from the theater so i had to supplement what i was making from other things like uh voiceovers and um commercials um so those are the tricky things i think that's the way i would answer the question um fig- the, figuring out the way to make a living out of it and then gaining some momentum so you can get to a place where you ha- you you built some momentum and you're you you built some um recognition of your name and work starts to find you mm-hmm. um it's a little tricky to to get to that point so that, i think that's probably the biggest challenge now you're at that point where work finds you um i'm for the for tv and film um i'm getting there mm-hmm. i'm getting there this this job the continental is my biggest my biggest job um but each you know each job you hope it opens doors to other things so and that's that's how this job worked because the the director of this project albert hughes is his name he um i had worked with him already mm-hmm. so we built a relationship um we worked very well together and so he he told me he wanted to work with me again um sometimes i hear that from other uh, directors and i just kind of go okay great you know but i don't you know i don't think about it too much mm-hmm. But he's really a man of his word. When this project came, he called me and said, I want you in this, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah. The way you just talk about your, I mean, your career so far, it, it sounds like everything happened so smooth and uh, every step followed another step and every door opened another door. Yeah. Have you ever had a turning point where you like, where you were like doubting yourself? Um, you know, I I never doubt my what I can do, like mm-hmm. my ability, but uh, I, I really, my career has been kind of like how you said, like one thing leads to the nut, to the next. And um, it's been, uh, I've sort of climbed the ladder little by little, you know, one step at a time. That's really been my thing. But, uh, um, but there's been, if there was any hiccup, it was, uh, Yeah, maybe maybe uh, a little while ago, uh, just like the financial things. It kind mm-hmm. of it kind of relates to what we were, what I was saying about building the career and figuring out how to make a living out of it. And um, I did reach a point where uh, my funds got really low, and I was like, "Oh man, I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do." So it, um, so I had to be very strategic. I had to take a step back and figure out. Um, how I was going to continue to make my living doing it. And around that time I met my wife, you know, you know, we had just met and, um, I knew it was getting serious and I said, all right, this is going to go far, I think. And, uh, it had me thinking in ways I hadn't thought before about like building a life with her and I said, I, I need some income. <laughs> like I need to, I need to, uh, um, the way that I had been, living thus far was just a single guy making just enough money but like I said the funds got really thin at some point and so that is also around the time where I said I need to 
shift gears and look into maybe, you know, on camera work because um, it's there's there tends to be much more money with this kind of work and um, and it was also a new challenge. So so basically, you're saying she was um, she was like a force. She forced you in some ways to be better. Um, so you wanted to grow and. I mean, obviously you wanted to be better day by day, but yeah, yeah, when you yeah. met her, you felt something that, okay, I really have to step up the game because you wanted to give something, I don't know, safe environment, let's say, mm. or, or something that she can rely on. And, and you wanted to give her something else as well, obviously out of love and, and, and a healthy relationship. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think she, I guess I would say she motivated me to, yes. uh, to figure out certain things so that I could be more stable um, financially, you know. Um, I wanted that for her. I didn't want to be in a relationship where I was um, financially unstable. So, and that's that's hard because as an actor, you, you go from job to job, you know. After one job is done, you're technically un unemployed, <laughs> you know, unless you go right into something else. And so, uh, um, so... That was a tricky that's that's kind of always going to be a, a tricky um balance but uh yeah i think she motivated me to to be better in many ways really mm -hmm. yeah this is what a great woman can do <laughs> exactly for you so exactly yeah um, and what did you do then what well, was the next step when you had this um turning point when i when i made this turning point well um let me see how um, how to explain so um so uh, there's this um, organization in the uh, States um, called the Actors Fund, mm -hmm. and they provide workshops um, for actors around money management and uh, um, uh, for free. They offer a lot of services uh, for free. And so uh, I started going to those courses and learning a lot about better ways to manage money and uh, ways to find work that... Um, that I didn't hate. That was a big thing they were trying to teach you because a lot of, a lot of actors sometimes they do work, you know, non-acting work that makes you really unhappy. Mm -hmm. So um, when I took a step back from theater, I said, "All right, well, I was basically trying to create a space for me to book more TV and film jobs, but I had to leave space for it because I always had a theater job, always. So I had to put it aside." but still have some income. So I found some different part-time jobs, mm -hmm. uh, which was hard. It's hard to go, I'm not going to act, you know, I have, you know, I'm going to put that aside to create space for different acting jobs. But that's, that's what I did. And, um, I had these, I had these jobs. I worked with kids for, um, maybe it was six months, maybe it was longer. Uh, but I taught, uh, I actually taught acting, but I taught sports also basketball, soccer, and, in after school programs and uh and i also did a uh, um, another kind of job where i was sort of uh what they call a companion for uh, older people mm -hmm. um, who need uh, assistance um, but those were jobs i didn't hate they were good the the the, the um there was some flexibility with um the timing so i could still audition but then i also had you know those jobs. So the, so the, the plan worked and I did those jobs for a while while still auditioning. And then I booked a, a play, um, at a big theater that, that I couldn't pass up, even though I was putting theater aside, this was a, a play at a theater, um, called the public. And it was uh, Shakespeare in the park. And it was a play called much ado about nothing. And I had always wanted to do a play at this theater, um, in the, in the park. So I said, all right, I'm going to do this. And then after that, then I booked this, uh, this TV gig called The Good Lord Bird with the director, Albert, that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so after that, it was like kind of off and running, you know. Then I, I quit all the jobs, all the part-time <laughs> jobs. I told the kids bye. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I had to be strategic. I don't know if, mm -hmm. if any of that, all that kind of made sense, but the, the strategy the strategy ended up working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And do you, did you like working with kids? I do. I do. Uh, this, this was tricky though, man. I mean, it's, 
but you need a lot of energy and uh, <laughs> yeah, these yeah, kids. nonstop. <laughs> you know, and this particular school I was working at, oh man, fights every day. Oh, every day, kids fighting. So I had to break fights up every day. Oh, kids arguing about just the silliest things. Um, it was kind of a rough neighborhood in, in Brooklyn that I was working at. So um, the kids were all just doing their best, but there's just so many things in their community that were distracting them from focusing. And, um, you know, and uh, all, all the kids were, were different, but they, they were good kids. But, man, every day I was breaking up fights. It was getting old. I was like, oh, my gosh. I can't. Not again. <laughs> yeah, I was like, kid, just stop fighting. I'm trying to break the fights up. So um, that was uh, that was hard. And then um, the the job where I was a companion for um, older people. I was working with a woman who had dementia. So that was a whole nother experience because uh, she didn't really remember who I was from week to week. So I would just see the next week and she would say, hi, and who, who are you? What would you like? And I said, hello, Meg. Um, I'm here to help you out. And I'd have to go through the same thing mm -hmm. over and over again, like working with the kids. And I, I really did like helping the the elderly woman um yeah i like giving back in that way yes i mean it, it comes uh, with every dif discussion that we had i felt that you have um, a huge amount of empathy mm. uh, towards i don't know forever whatever uh, if you're talking about kids or animals or other people mm. um yes it's 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 very unique so um, i really like that um so take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say I have empathy? <laughs> well, call me empathetic. <laughs> so yes, and do you have any other, um, do you have any goals that you really want to reach in, in acting? Like, I don't know, yeah, I want to win an Oscar or, or anything? Um, well, my wife and I want to have a production company. Mm -hmm. So I would really like to do that. Um, at some point, we will we will do that um, at some point um, because I want to I want to do that for a bunch of different reasons. But uh, um, I kind of want to help uh, people tell their story, people who um, don't uh, have any other way to tell their story. I want to give them another avenue, another opportunity with with our production company to tell um, their story and then just open doors for more artists and stuff you know so i i think that's um i think that's that's one of my um biggest goals and then um yeah and then maybe there's some stories i've had in my head over the i don't write mm -hmm. but there are some stories i've i've had in my head over the years that i think i would like to collaborate with some writers and and um tell the story also so it would it would help be, it would be an avenue to tell some of some stories I want to tell and also provide opportunities for mm -hmm. other people. And um, uh, you've been talking about um, sports and how you've been connected to sports. Did you do any sports? I did. I what? did. Was it? Well, I, I did play as in the state soccer, but yeah, foot, football, right? Um, I played that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I was really into it. I, I wanted to be a professional. I mean, it's... <clears throat> I was very passionate about it. Um, so I did that. I did, um, and I played on my high school team and also uh, for my town, had a separate team. I played for them. So it, um, I was really all about it, but I was, I was quite athletic. I played basketball, um, not, the, not the high school team, but um, I would play, I guess we call it street ball, mm -hmm. you know, in the States. So, um, and we would get very competitive, very intense, uh, matches. Um, I played basketball a lot. You had to break up fights there as well. <laughs> <laughs> there, there were fights there also. I've been breaking up fights my whole life. <laughs> Story of my life. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, there were there were some fights, um, but yeah, those those got really intense. But yeah, I played that. I played tennis on the on the um, high school team. Um, but um, I I could play most sports, so I was. I was quite athletic, and um, I think that athleticism has helped. It does help me with the training that I've had to do now, even though that was a while ago, you know, high school. But um, I'm able to tap into some of it for the training I'm yes. doing now. There's some, some parts of your 
of your muscle memory comes back in and like yeah and, but bit. do you reach that point where you think that oh i was able to i don't know do uh, my back roll or whatever spin <laughs> and then you reach a point that where you're over 20 and then you're like mm, ah, i wasn't really able to, i'm not really able to do that anymore <laughs> um yeah i well i think actually more so than not i'm surprised at what i can do with the mm-hmm. with with the the training um so but of course there there are some things but the thing is i wasn't doing fight training back then mm-hmm. um if i were to compare I would, i would have to we would have to get a soccer ball out and say okay let me see what i can remember you know Wait, let me get you you, you got one <laughs> <laughs> yeah go get your brother let's say, let me let me sh- you know he can show me some stuff that uh, um i probably still remember a lot of it but um i'm sure there's a lot i, I can't do that i used to do Because I'm not, I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> I'm not. How uh, do you handle that? What age? age? Aging? Oh, it's great. I mean, you're not old, obviously. I'm not old, but uh, I feel young. I feel very good. But I think that's, I I think um, it's because I'm doing what I love. So I don't, um, I think that's the main thing about it. I'm I'm doing what I love. I feel like I'm doing what I what I want to do so um I feel very energized when I go to work uh when I when I go to set I'm I just love I just love it I love it I love being on set I'm I love asking people questions I love watching what people are doing I love I love watching acting I love you know it's just so I love what I do I think that makes me feel to so really passionate about acting as well uh, right? yeah yeah for for sure it's um I mean, I guess in some ways I dedicated my life to it, you know, um, so, but I'm all about it. <laughs> And what do you think, if it wasn't for acting, what would you do now? Um, probably music. Music? Yeah. What it, would you do? You play any, any um, instruments? I do play a little bit guitar. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can, I I can't read music, but I can, um, I can play by ear. You know, all those years that I sang, I developed a pretty good ear, so... If I um, think of a melody, you know, I, I can figure it out on the on the guitar. And uh, um, a lot of the men on my father's side of the family played guitar in mm-hmm. Haiti. And I think it's in my blood. So when I picked up the guitar, I picked it up relatively quickly. Um, and so, uh, um, yeah, if, if I wasn't completely focused on acting, I would be a musician. I'd be touring and, you know, I'd be all about it. Yeah. And what kind of music would you play? You do? Um, it would probably be some kind of fusion because I, I I like to think about how to actively create something new with with music, and I do listen to all kind of genres, like a lot of people do. But I would when I used to play a little more. Um, I used to play with some friends of mine back in New York, and um, when we played, I would actively try to. Um, combine different genres so i'd be listening to funk music like funkadelic and i'd say all right i want to do that but i really like the blues um but i like r&b bass lines you know but i like classical strings <laughs> how am i going to put all this and that that used to be what really got me excited so that's probably what i would do some kind of fusion mm-hmm. so the music and and if i don't know a sports music what's next What's the other thing that you really liked when you were a kid? When I was a kid, um, what else was it? Um, I mean, this pretty much sums up your daily life, right? You went to school, you played some games, and you yeah sang. You went back home, and you probably did your homework, and then fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much, um, and yeah, I was doing, uh, yeah, doing music with some friends after school, and. Uh, Um, but listening, I mean, I'm very passionate about listening to music. I, I try to, um, create time to actively listen to music. So not just background, uh, music. So, and I've always done that as a kid. So I'd have my headphones and just, you know, just focus on listening. And, um, that's something I still do that I'm very, um, passionate about. So, Yeah. And who was the who was the actor or even the direct any director that you uh-huh. worked with and had a huge impact on you? Actor or director? 
um, man, I, I take from everybody, man. I really, <laughs> everyone I've worked with. Um, I, let me see. Uh, you know, I did work with um, Felicia Rashad, you know, from the, from the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. She directed me in a play a long time ago um, called A Raisin in the Sun. Um, and that was a, a very positive experience. And um, she taught me a lot. She, uh, she helped me. I mean, I could go on and on about it, but she really helped me with understanding uh, timing with, with uh, acting, which I knew about. But she had a way of explaining it that really clicked for me. So after I worked with her, I noticed that my timing was was much better. You know, I could read a script and and kind of pick up on the the timing, the rhythm that the writer intended just by reading it. Mm -hmm. And um, she used to like to explain for certain plays that uh, she used to like to think of it like a band. You know, she would say this character is like is the drummer. This character is you're like the saxophone player. This one is like. And something about that, because of my love of music, when she talked about it in musical terms, I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of, you know, that kind of makes sense to me. And um, so, um, yeah, I guess I, I would say, but I, I could say so many people, really, mm -hmm. but I, I can say Felicia was, was great. And do you have any role models as an actor? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I mean... Um, Who would I, that be? I love, um, I love David Oyelowo. Uh, he's wonderful. Um, Don Cheadle, Jeffrey Wright, Lawrence Fishburne, Denzel, um, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe my favorite. It's so hard to pick a favorite, but I often go back to uh, Anthony Hopkins. There's something, something about him and um, his history doing theater. Uh, and just watching him um, transform in his roles. And I think he's in his 80s now, and he's still doing some amazing projects. And um, I'll, I'll often watch interviews with him. Mm -hmm. To um, That's one of the ways that I get inspired, you know, in between jobs. Um, so I'll just go on YouTube and... I think I've seen every interview with, with him on, on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I just I just go back and reference it. But um, even a couple of weeks ago, uh, there's a lot of movies of his I haven't seen. And uh, he played B Picasso in a, in a movie years ago. And I had never seen it. And I watched it a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I just loved it. And um, I, I love his acting. So, uh, but... Uh, that that's a lot of men. I mean, there's also Meryl Streep, you know. <laughs> there's Sophie Okonedo, who I who I love. Um, there's uh, Indira Varma. Uh, these are some UK actors who I who I really love. Um, you know, Susan Sarandon and um, Viola Davis. Uh, there's a uh, there's a lot of women I love too. So. Um, I really just, I can learn from anyone. I could watch anything. I'm not the kind of actor who can, who watches something and goes, ah, and like turns it off. Mm -hmm. I usually finish it. You know, even if I'm not really into it, I'll, I'll finish it. And I just, I like to figure out what, what was going on. You know, if mm -hmm. I didn't like it, I said, well, why didn't I like it? What, what do I think could have been better? Um, I do that for plays. You know, I never walk out of a play or something. I, There's always something I can pick up. So. so you're constantly developing and educating yourself. Always. In various ways, right? Always. And then as an actor, even I guess other um, artists would say this too, but you um, find ins inspiration from anywhere. I mean, I can walk down the street and I'm, we, I watch people in certain ways, body language, how people communicate. Uh, there's certain things. I'll save it, you know, I'll see someone... Uh, walking in a certain way and I go, oh, I gotta remember that, <laughs> you know, and I can use, you know, there was someone walking, had a very interesting walk a couple weeks ago uh, when I was uh, in the van going to my training and I was watching him and he just had this kind of way of walking and I was like, oh man, that's good, that's good. Um, uh, sometimes I, um, like I said, um, in, in New York, uh, I would be in Times Square a lot, so uh There was a, there was a guy. I was sitting in a, like a Starbucks or something, and there was a, 
a guy who had a very interesting hair haircut or it wasn't a haircut but he just had an interesting black guy but his hair was kind of combed back in a way and I managed to take a picture of it I didn't I felt bad doing it <laughs> but I was like I just I love that look man and I just took a picture and um, for certain auditions I've had the past couple of years, I'm like, I'm going to do that look. And I take the hair in my hair and I just like <laughs> comb it back. Um, so I can get inspiration from a lot of different places, you know. Um, do you know what's going to happen after you finish shooting this series? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I, uh, it's kind of weird to say I've gotten used to that feeling because that's how it is for most of my career. I've had moments where I had lots of, some jobs lined up, you know, but that's not always the case, but there's always something in me, I don't, I don't know what it is that I'm like, I'm gonna have some job. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but something will come. So, uh, something will come. How <laughs> difficult was handling, we can step a little bit back, yeah, just yeah, a yeah. few weeks, a few years, a few months, how difficult was the COVID situation for you? Well, that that was, well, it was tricky. It was because, uh, yeah, you know, couldn't uh, couldn't work. It would have been trickier if I was still focused on theater because it took theater longer to come back. Um, um, and I I was just about to start a, a filming a TV show before everything shut down. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was hard. And then there was no um, there was no guarantee that it was going to come back. I mean. And I would call the producer sometimes and um, just ask him, like, what, what do you think? Are they still talking about it? The studio, do they still want to do it? And he kept assuring me it's going to work out. But, yeah, I mean, that was, acting's always been my main income besides that one period I told you about mm -hmm. where I kind of took a step back. But So I was a little bit uh, nervous. My bank account was getting lower and lower, you know. It's like... I was I was relying on some assistance from the government and but uh um you know it ended up working out and I when everything started to open back up this job did come through and then mm -hmm. started filming so um I was very grateful for that but yeah it was just like everyone it was just a lot of time home and you know and what was just daily you, your daily I mean Routine changed, obviously, but yeah. How did yeah. you have any routine on a daily basis? Like I don't know, workouts at home or whatever. Yeah, I I did I did try to keep active with working out a little bit. Um, I um, I was trying to uh, I spent some time actually archiving some uh, some music projects I had done as a as a kid with with my friends that were all on cassette tape. And uh, so um, that took some time. So I was very focused on that. So I, you know, uh, digitized them and put them in the cloud. So uh, I did that. Um, that's when we got married, like I said, you know, during COVID. So that took some preparation and, um, um, you know, but a lot of it's a blur, right? I mean, I... It just happened so fast. Right? Yeah. You know, I, I read, I read a lot. I was doing some... I was getting ready to do some press for that show, The Good Lord Bird, that I had filmed. Um, so I did press for that, um, but that required uh, that that show was took place uh, right before the Civil War um, in the states, and so uh, in order to prepare for um, doing some um, publicity for it. I spent months uh, like re-educating myself on American history, so I did that, and I was reading books, listening to audio books, and just getting ready for certain questions because I I didn't want to, I just wanted to be prepared. Uh, so that that took a lot of time. So, did you enjoy uh, it? What the the preparation? The preparation part. Um, I did, but you know this particular point in American history is very intense, you yes. know, <laughs> very depressing, <learning>, very <laughs> depressing, you know, learning about enslaved people is it's hard. And I had already, I had just finished not long before then, um, immersing myself in that time period, playing a character who was an enslaved man. And so to, to go back to that was, was a lot, you know, and then we had 
that was around when George Floyd was killed. So then, you know, we're dealing with all that in the States and obviously it echoed around, you know, around the world. But, uh, um, and I was noticing parallels, of, you know, what I was reading about in history and what was happening in the current moment. So it, it was, it was intense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see any change since then? Uh, in the in the states, in the, in the states, yes. Or uh, after the Floyd, George Floyd. Yeah, I mean it's just a short period of time. But yeah, still. yeah, it was it was short. I mean, I think a lot of us were looking for more. I think there was a lot of talk of change. There was a lot of showing that people wanted to show that they cared and. You know, I think there were a lot of uh, organizations that took advantage and were like, yeah, Black Lives Matter, but buy our cologne or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, whatever yeah. it was, uh, which is not um, atypical for a sort of capitalist kind of thing. So I'm not surprised by it, but um, yeah, people took advantage. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I saw the kind of change that I think I, I wanted to see the kind of change that was going to be put into laws. You know, I wanted to see mm -hmm. certain things change in that way, you know, um, structural change, uh, legislative changes. And um, we haven't seen some of those things, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. um, besides without those kinds of changes, a lot of it, I think, is just talk, you know, and um, I think there's been a lot of talk for a long time, too long. So. <laughs> We need we need action, you know. Yes. And uh, how do you see um, here? You have spent already over six months here in Hungary as a black man. How do you find it here? You know, I don't feel that uh, um, that that weight that uh, I feel as a black man in the states. I know um, you and I spoke about this. Um, we spoke about this with with Ray too when, when we hung out not that long ago. I, I think I think. Um, Ray had had put it quite well, and I hope he wouldn't mind me <laughs> mention, mentioning it, you know. But um, there, the, he he kind of said that uh, um, he feels like there's this, this bag, you know, with with rocks, there's all this weight. And then when he got out of the states, he didn't feel this this bag, you know. He and um, he didn't realize he even had a bag, you know, with with all this weight on it. And um, I was aware of the, of that weight because I felt it. Um, I felt the weight removed when I went to places like Africa, you know, um, and um, uh, so I don't, it's not like uh, I don't have that bag on when I'm here, but I don't, I don't feel it like I do in the States. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost a little hard to explain. I mean, um, maybe I'll need some time to process when I, when I get back to the States, but uh, it's... Um, I feel a little more relaxed, you know. Yes, it might be because, you know, we don't have that history. You don't have that here. history, it's very true. Obviously, there are some things that happen here, even with me or with my brother or with my friends, but mm. still, in general, it's just some portion of people, a smaller portion, luckily. Mm. And the rest, they just don't care. Even they just, just, if they just look at me and stare at me, they'll just start speaking to me in Hungarian, in English, Yeah, which is... a. Um, which happens on a daily basis is, <laughs> is, is, is just come from the fact that, you know, uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the Hungarians are white people. Obviously there we have gypsies here, but, but that's different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they just more like, um, is a uniqueness that they just look at you like, oh, well, well, okay. Even my, my nephew is just like, oh, look, there's a black guy. And he's just happy because he sees a black guy because <laughs> um, he always roots for the black people. And, and right. he, uh, yes, so he's a funny <laughs> dude. But um, yeah, on a daily yeah, basis. Just, uh, yeah. It's just, the, it's just the history of it, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's probably the simplest way to, uh, to put it. We don't, we don't have that. I'm not... Um, I'm not in the middle of that history like like I am in the, in the mm -hmm. United States. Yeah. Um, and you said you want to create your own production company. You want to, and you really like to give back. Is there any other ways you would like to give back for the for communities or for the world itself or the earth? Um, because you seem to be the kind of person that really wants to make this whole world a better place. 
Am I right? Yeah. Well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, <laughs> <laughs> which I just did. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, easy, easy. I don't want the whole world. All right, just uh, no, no. Um, I do. I, I want to uh, help in ways that I can. I mean, um, with my family, you know, I, I want to uh, do things. I want to. I'm looking forward to being able to give back to my parents. Um, in ways that I haven't been able to before. And, uh, you know, my, my siblings and my nieces and nephews. And so, yeah, that's just the family part of it. And then, yeah, if I, if I look out and um, think about the, the wider world and the, the states and everything, most, most definitely. I mean, um, you know, when, when my wife and I got married, we, um, we did some things in a non-traditional way and we, uh, instead of um, having a registry, um, we asked anyone, well, first of all, we said we didn't want any anything, um, but that if people were going to um, give us uh, money like, like they do traditionally, that we were going to take that money and um, put it in a fund. Uh, well, it was a GoFundMe that, that we had, and we were going to uh, donate it to different um, black organizations. Mm -hmm. and that's what we ended up doing. And um, that's actually another thing that we took time to do during um, COVID, which was research different black organizations that we wanted to donate money to. And we, we raised like over $35,000, and we, we were very strategic about different... Um, um, yeah, different types of businesses that were that were black owned, and um, that was a big way that we gave back, and that's kind of like how we wanted to start our um, life together by mm -hmm. saying this: we want to give back. Um, so I see us con um, continuing in that tradition and um, with our production company, like you said, um, and um, other ways that I I don't even think I'm fully aware of yet. I'm sure we will discover um, different ways to to um, help. I do, I do, um, I often talk with um, acting students um, from my performing arts school and NYU. I, I go back and speak and uh, help, uh, help actors a lot with advice. And uh, so that's kind of how I do it in the business. But yeah, if you have other ideas of ways, <laughs> ways that we can give back, let me know. Um, yeah, you know. there are several, but Yes, we can discuss it in other ways. But uh, yeah, so and about acting, um, do you think that this is going to be obviously apart from your production company? Do you think this is going to be a lifelong journey for you? I think so. Um, this is because obviously this is your passion. You really love it, every aspect of it. So um, I really do. Uh, you know, like these some of these actors that I mentioned to you that I look up to, um, like Anthony Hopkins, and I mean, like I said, he's in his eighties and he's still going strong. And um, I mean, I can see a scenario where I'm, you know, up up, you know, that kind of age and still trying to challenge myself and um, tell different stories, and then also providing opportunities for. Um, other kinds of stories too. So I, I, I can't see, um, any other kind of, uh, focus for me right, right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, uh, focus what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> no, it's all right. I mean, I almost want to ask you cause you were, you know, before we started, you were saying something about an acting role, Yes. you know, uh, and poss the possibility of you, going into you know uh um and you had done some acting right so yes some advertisement and some smaller roles in movies here so you know with that are you excited about this potential opportunity you know for the for acting yes you know it's crazy because i can cry on purpose you can yes nice. um, <laughs> they, I, I played football for over 20 years so i can act <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Somebody pushes you, you go, oh, oh no, really ref, what's going on? <laughs> that is acting. That's so true. <laughs> um, and and <laughs> since you said uh, that you're constantly looking people, how they act, how they move, what they do, and I just realized I, I always loved it. 
I always check mm. what people do. I didn't know for what reason I really loved it. I always yeah. loved something in it. Yeah. Um, and I really loved psychology as well. Mm. Um, maybe that's that's probably one half of it. That's why I really loved it. And I'm always looking for body language, how they act, why they do that, what should be the background of it. What if 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 I see someone on the subway, let's say, mm. and they have a bad day, I'm just I just start thinking about what should be the reason of it. Yeah. Why are they sad? Yeah. And and I just I just build a story behind it. Maybe I don't know. I just build something. Mm. So um, in general, yes, I'm 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 excited. Um, but also I have I know that when you do auditions, when I do audition, uh, or when I did it, I was when I left, I was like, okay, yes, it went well, and the feedback since then is that yes, it went it went well. Mm. But I started doubting myself that maybe I should have changed something in it, or maybe I should have done that in a different way, mm. or maybe I should have asked them if 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 this is how they want to set it up. Mm. Um, and since then, you also mentioned that you always ask constantly questions. But I think yeah. if when you're on set, you obviously ask. But uh, I've been guided that I should do it in this way and that way. So it was easier, obviously. But I was just constantly doubting myself if, okay, I said it this way. But maybe if I just, why haven't I done that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, but you know that I do other things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that helps a lot as well. Mm. Because it also, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, communication is a huge part of acting as well. Yes. Yeah. 100%. So you really have to not only educate yourself how to talk out, you just really have to know how to ask questions as well. Yes. Um, and you have to be open-minded mm -hmm. for feedbacks. And oh, you yeah. have to take feedbacks as, as, as directions or guidance, not, not taking it personally. Yes. Um, so yes, I'm. I'm really looking forward to it, and I said that I'm coming after you. <laughs> For me? Oh, you can. I'm gonna see you on set. They're gonna say we recast this role. <laughs> what the heck? That'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And since acting, uh, I have one more question for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Is if there's one role or one person that you could act, act, who would that be, or which role would that be? Um, who I could play? You're saying? Yes. Oh, um, um, it, it would be this. Um, there's a Haitian artist who I grew up listening to. Um, his name is Guy Duozier, and um, I grew up listening um, to his music. And uh, I'm very, I'm just fascinated by him. And um, though I have never been to Haiti, when I listen to his music, it just transports me to the country in a way that's, it's almost hard to describe, but um, I, I feel so many things when I listen to him. And so um, he's not uh, widely known, at least he's not discussed, you know, in modern day. And so I think there's something there about his story. And so it's something that um, I will probably try to develop you know mm -hmm. um so i i think playing him would be a, a great challenge yeah okay well um i really thank you for being here with us at budapest fam yeah. um and all the best for your career and you, don't man. forget that i'm coming <laughs> <laughs> That was good acting. I don't know if the camera caught that, but <laughs> you were smiling and then you dropped it like this. Like, holy crap. That's yeah. good. That's so good. thank you very much again. And, and it, was, it was really nice meeting you again. Yeah, such a pleasure. Thank you, man. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Take care.